Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Sunnery here coming at you guys um, with another video. And today I'm talking about seeing butterflies because over this last week, um, I continued to catch butterflies when I was either in worship or when I was praying. <clears throat> I just kept catching an image. It was an image of a monarch butterfly. And so um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today because God finally made it make sense. Um, there's a scripture, we all know Ecclesiastes 3, right? It speaks about the times and the seasons of God. And so how there's a time to laugh, there's a time to cry, there's a time to sow, there's a time to reap, there's a time to speak, there's a time to be silent. There's a time and a season for every activity underneath the sun, right? But then if we do -do 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 down a little further in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, it says that God makes everything beautiful in its time, okay? God makes everything beautiful in its time, which even in itself is a whole word, right? But, aka process, but that's a whole word. But when we look at that scripture, I saw a connection, I think this was a few nights ago, between that scripture and Romans 8.28. Because Romans 8.28 tells us, God will cause all things to work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose, right? And we generally take that to mean that God will cause the good and the bad things to work together. Because if we go back to Romans 8.18, it speaks about the present sufferings do not compare to the glory that is coming, right? And so the, the present sufferings is what Paul was mentioning when he was speaking about God causing all things. So the, the season of crying, the season of sowing, all of those things, right? When the time of joy comes, when this comes, it, it all comes to work together for our good, right? And so what does that mean though? God causes all things to work together for our good. Like, what's the result of that? I'll tell you, the result of that process is something beautiful. Because remember, God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose, right? But then also, when we look at Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says that God makes everything beautiful in its time. And so how does this connect to the image of the butterfly? Well, the Lord placed um, the potter and the clay in my spirit. I believe that's Jeremiah 18, right? And so in Jeremiah 18, it's speaking about the potter forming this piece of clay into a pot. But at some point, the clay becomes marred. Marred is just a fancy word for blemished. It becomes blemished. It becomes tainted. But instead of throwing out the clay, the potter just continues to work out the clay and then create this beautiful masterpiece. I believe it's a scripture in a Ephesians do not have me lying, but I know it's in Ephesians. I think it might be 210, but it's in Ephesians. And it talks about for we are God's masterpieces. The masterpiece in an artist's career is something that they're so proud of. It's like the Mona Lisa, okay? It's like the, I don't know, it's like the Mona Lisa. That's the perfect example of a masterpiece, right? And so the thing is, is that God with him showing me this butterfly, what he was saying is, is that not only has a process been completed, but that process has produced something beautiful in its time, right? Because my time was is different from your time. Your time is different from that person's time. And we can continue going on to infinity with that, but you get what I'm saying. And so I'm here to tell someone today that the Lord pulled you into a cocoon. And sometimes it felt like you were in a cocoon for seasons, right? Like you're like, oh, I'm coming out as a butterfly. But for some of you, your actual time of coming out into destiny, remember, appointed time into position, all of that stuff is now. And so I'm like, God, well, why, why, do, why, why do we need to focus on a butterfly? Well, we know the process, right? It's, it's so ugly, Literally, the it, it, it reminds me of um, don't, apoptosis, like cell death, program cell death, right? Or necrosis, um, which is when cells begin to die because they're infected, right? And then 
creation of new life, but that's exactly similarly to what happens inside of a cocoon. The, um, the caterpillar, it releases these digestive enzymes and it digests itself. So it's a huge soupy mess. That is not beautiful. That sounds like a season of crying. That sounds like a season where you're constantly sowing but not seeing any harvest produced from it, right? But God will cause all of those ugly parts, even when the butterfly had to once crawl as a caterpillar to get its food, to create this beautiful masterpiece that can now fly, that now has this, I think it's not antenna, but that now has this thing that can access the sweetness of it. Because another thing the Lord gave me a revelation of um, back in July was even the transformation with what the caterpillar was able to eat. The caterpillar didn't have, only had access to the outer parts of the plant. But once it went through its process and became a butterfly, it now had access to the sweet because it, it developed the it developed a piece. I don't know the name of it right now, but it developed a piece that was able to now penetrate the plants and access the nectar. So it went from accessing the manna to now accessing the fruit of the land to now accessing the milk, the honey, the the, the sweeter things, right? And so for a lot of you, that is where God has you right now. And so I think it's so beautiful when God calls us to go back over the years and reflect because a lot of you, your life will change within an instant and you'll be like, whoa, because you're going to see that he made it beautiful. I was about to sing this song, but beautiful. You make everything beautiful. I keep hearing it, but oh, beautiful, beautiful. You make everything beautiful. It's a song by um the Walls Group. Oh, beautiful. But anywho, God has made everything beautiful within its time. And that beautiful being made within its time is you. So if you've been seeing butterflies, quite possibly the Lord could be saying a lot. But this may serve as confirmation for some people who probably have been seeing those scriptures about the potter and the clay, about butterflies, about Romans 8.28, and even more importantly, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. But I pray that this is a confirmation that some people needed um, to discerning what it is that the Lord is saying at this time. But for some of you, it's really important that you take some time and really look over the years, the good and the bad. Because you're about to see the beautiful masterpiece that the Lord has created. The Lord has intricately woven every single aspect of your life for this major Kairos destiny moment. And as you step into it, as you step into the whirlwind of the full circles and blessings being poured out, blessings upon blessings and unexpected testimony after unexpected testimony, you're going to see how the Lord has caused all things to work together for your good, but also how he has caused all things um, but also how, how he has caused those things to create something beautiful, which is you. I love you all so much, and I'll talk to you later.